Welcome back to the podcast episode nine. You're here with Hoop, Zany, and the infamous ZZ Huncho. I want to talk about Zion Williamson on this fine Friday afternoon. Uh, his new contract extension will require his weight and body fat percentage to add up to less than 295. And if he's over that number, he gets his guaranteed money reduced. And I checked basketball reference right before the episode. His current weight is at 284 pounds. So <laughs> 284 with an 11, 11% body fat percentage, that's wild. Uh, I don't know what his weight's at right now because I know I think he lost a little bit. But, I mean, good for the Pelicans to keep him motivated. My, my question to you, though, is if you were to include a requirement in another NBA player's contract, what would the requirement be and on what player? Z, I want to hear it. Uh, when you said that, the first thing that popped in my head was Russell Westbrook. And I'm sorry, Saini, I know, I know that you're probably mad at me, but it's fine. I would say uh, if I had to put a freaking clause in Russell Westbrook's contract, it would be, okay, listen, if you were in a corner and you were left wide open, rethink your decision. Maybe call a timeout, something, and pass it back up top to the top of the key, maybe, or drive in. If I'm talking realistic. In, I'm talking realistic. That's that's that, look, man. I'm sorry. That's that's got to be that. That's probably going to be realistic. Let's just think about it. If if you got your home crowd sitting there telling you not to shoot, what do you think the front office is up there in the nosebleeds thinking? Like, <laughs> damn, damn. If we can't tell him not to shoot. The coach can't tell him not to shoot. LeBron James can't tell him not to shoot. He still wants to shoot. So no, I would be if I was Rob Polinka, I'd be like, yeah, make sure to put that in there. That's that's the no shot clause. That's what we'll call it, the no shot clause. I'd say just give him an hour or two in the gym yeah. every other day. And working with a shooting coach as opposed it's, to it's Russ, though. I feel like Russ is, is, is Bro, he's you're you're paying You're paying him all that money to not shoot. Is Russell so so you're telling me that if you if you if you were coach hoop, I'm trying to fix it. No, no, no. If if I'm coach hoop, I'm telling him don't aim for the backboard. Okay, fair. You know that he thinks fair. he's Tim Duncan. That's fair. That's fair. <laughs> Sadie, Sadie, I want to hear what you have to say. I, I do. I'd make him lose muscle. That's what I'd do. Really? Bro, he's, him, he's, he's, he's too big to shoot. You never seen guy that muscly shoot. Guys, and if I it agree. is, no, there's no guards that. that big that I can, can agree shoot, with bro. That. I can agree with that. Russell Westbrook think, is a buff human being. I think um, I don't think we will ever, ever see that on a contract. Z. Yeah, no. Um, <laughs> but if I, were to, the ZZ if I were to have a <laughs> player... Or a contract that forces a player to do something, it would probably be for Kyrie Irving. Yeah, and I oh, probably God. say like you can't request a trade, <laughs> like you don't get the you don't have the ability to request a trade, um, because it, I think he causes too many problems with that, and he goes to the media too much. Like all of the Brooklyn Nets problems are just like blasted across to everybody. Like I, I, I at this point, I know Sean Marks issues with his wife. You know what I mean? Like the, everything, <laughs> everything that happens with the Nets is so. Like, yeah, what are you gonna, public? what are you gonna do with Sean Marks, bro? <laughs> I just, I'm just saying, like, I'm just saying, like, I would tell Kyrie, I would tell Kyrie, like, hey, screw off because you're making our team uh, have a terrible <laughs> reputation. <laughs> but um, I'm joking. I'm obviously joking. But seriously, like, I would probably give it to Kyrie and say, like, hey, no more publicly uh, saying stuff and and doing. Like tarnishing the Nets name, you know what I mean? I I can't believe you brought Sean Mark's <laughs> wife into this. <laughs> but yeah, no, no but I like, think you uh, get the point. You get the point. Like obviously, like yeah, but what yeah, if the Nets did him like divorce. extremely dirty after he signed the the no trade request? They like just demolished the team and like publicly humiliated him every night. I don't know. I'm just trying to think of like realistic hypothetically like, yeah, that could happen. But I don't see an NBA team doing all that to be petty towards one player. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> imagine, imagine the Nets make Kyrie sign that contract and they just destroy their team. That's the entertainment just, just America to give, needs. Just to give Kyrie like three years of bad basketball. But um, oh my no, seriously, God. that would like I would tell Kyrie you can't request a trade. We can, trade you. we can trade you if, if it's not working. We can trade you. But you can't be out here, like, asking the Lakers to trade for you and, like, do all this stuff. You know what if I mean? That, if that actually happened, though, like, I would be, like, you know, adamant on, you know, justice for Kyrie. Because if I'm Sean Marks, I'm like, you took years off my marriage. I'm taking years off your career. Like, that's, <laughs> that's what I would do. That's a, like, that's a good play and say that's an why, evil why, good Why is his play. wife still involved in this? <laughs> I'm sorry. I had to bring her back. Sean couldn't, so I had to. My bad. All right, let's chill, move on. Let's 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 move on.
<laughs> that was a great opening discussion. I'm still I'm still dying. Uh, hopefully Sean Marks doesn't or any <laughs> relatives hope, aren't watching right now. I hope he has right a healthy now. marriage. I have no idea how his marriage is. Like, <laughs> I, yeah, I'm I hope you guys joke, are good. Bro. I'm making a joke. I hope y'all are good. We're just I'm doing this for joke. La Podcast. I don't, I don't know. All right. But um, anyways, before we get into today's lineup, La Podcast is sponsored by Manscaped. Use code La Podcast for 20% off their entire site. Your balls will thank you. Yes, they will. <laughs> yes, they will. But anyways, today's lineup, we have the headlines as always. Then Green chasing Green. SmackDown vs. Raw, uh, and Are They Tweaking featuring Saney. Insaney. Yours truly. Um, but starting <laughs> off with the headlines, an e-commerce site offered a Lamborghini for a rare LeBron James basketball card. It's a 2020-21 Panini Flawless Triple Logelman patch card. I don't know. I don't know basketball cards. But it sold for a price of $2.4 million at an auction recently. And apparently the value went up because Drizzy Drake shouted it out or something like that. Uh, my point is not to go into like, oh, yo, how dope is this card? You know, it's worth a Lamborghini. <laughs> my, my point is, what's the point of collecting basketball cards? Like, they, they, uh, don't, don't get me wrong. Like, they're cool. Yeah. And I understand, like, collectors, like, it's cool to have stuff that's rare. Right. But unless you're making money off it, which I feel like a lot of people, they just have them sitting around. Right. Literally. Like, what's the point of it? Like, why is it worth a Lamborghini? That's my point. I think I think that like the way people look at basketball cards or any collectible collectible really, it, it's the same thing as a stock, right? Like the value can go up and down depending on how long you hold it, like yeah. the rarity of it, the importance of it, the value of it. Some people just look at basketball cards and they just like to collect it. I mean, like everybody has their thing. I know I like to collect some things, um, jerseys being one of them. But I do understand like why some of them go for a lot of money. Uh, I have no idea the specifics of the card. I have no idea the importance of the card, why that card was so much money. But you could say the same thing as a stock. It's like, why are stocks so much money? Well, they make yeah, you money, right? Yeah. It's a, some other, like some people use cards as a way of making money. Like it's an investment. It's the same thing as an NFT. It's the same thing with crypto. It's the same thing with anything, really. It's an investment. Um, while I do see your point, like some people don't see it as an investment. They see it as something they have and it's like a prized possession. Uh, maybe down the line, they like give it to a family member or something, you know, something that's sentimental. But I do understand why some picture of LeBron James <laughs> on this cardboard square. <laughs> but I will say this, like when I found out about that, like Lamborghini being offered for that card, I swear I was sitting in my bed. I saw that on Bleach Report and I was like, bro, if I knew about this earlier, I would have ran to the staples near my house, yeah. printed out a picture of that card and pretended to pull it. And I would have been I mean, like, I'm Ooh. sure. Yeah, I'm sure there's a valid reason for it, but it's just hilarious reading, like reading the tweet. And then visually understanding what's going on, it's that just, like you really, give them a cardboard thing of LeBron James, and you get they give you a idiot. car. Yeah, right. oh <laughs> oh let's think about this. God. What does LeBron think? Like, imagine LeBron just like poses for a picture and just gets a label. That's what I'm saying. Like, that's cool. weird, bro. Like, that's weird. I don't, I don't understand the. I never really understood the hype for cards. Like, I get baseball cards, I guess, like collectors, but they're, but you have, you essentially have a card that's just sitting there collecting dust, whilst at the same time rising in revenue well some but of them I have don't... signatures and like pieces of a jersey on it like game one yeah. jerseys and stuff yeah, yeah. like it has like, to have bro, something like on it got, yeah. bro this is this is the problem with society bro i guarantee you if lebron james decided to just pee in his draws he would put those on the market somewhere and i guarantee you they would sell for at least over five hundred thousand dollars because there's some lebron fan out there that wants you know lestains like he just he, he needs them and he's gonna sell those for an even higher profit like, I don't, I don't get it. You know, that, that's, that's my topic. Little, I don't, uh, I don't little, get it. A little off topic to what he just said, Z. I remember one time uh, there was like an a article that came out that Justin Bieber was like eating a sandwich and some fan went up to him and offered him like thousands of dollars for that sandwich. Exactly. It was a half, you see eaten, what I'm saying? a half eaten Justin Bieber sandwich. This like imagine society, being that yeah. famous. Bri that Brian Windhorst with Tato's oh, draws. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure Skip would too. Skip, no, Skip's Skip, a hater, Skip, but he—I Skip think would, he's really a LeBron stand. No, nah, Shannon. Deep would down. No, no, not Skip. Skip would buy it not for himself, but for his wife. We all know Skip's wife is, yeah. is feeling LeBron. Ernest, let's be Ernestine, Ernestine, <laughs> Ernestine. <laughs> yeah, why? We're talking too many, too much about wives, guys. We're we're joking. Yeah, we're we talking about everybody's wives. <laughs> we did, we did. We, hey, it's it's not it's not our fault. It's we're single. We're ready to mingle. We got a freaking sponsorship with Manscaped. This is smooth sack summer. Y'all already know how it is, man. Y'all know what it is. Come on, man. This is the podcast. <laughs> No more, no, no more, more wife talk. No more wife talk in this podcast. <laughs> Let's move on to the next segment. Let's move on to the next segment. 
I'm, I'm not doing the next segment. I mean, that's you. That's you saying it. This guy, we got to collect ourselves. Yeah, oh I, my god. Oh, okay. Yeah. Smooth stack summer. D- deep breath. All right. <laughs> so moving on to Green chasing Green. Uh, reports say that Draymond Green is willing to leave the Warriors if not offered a four-year, one hundred and thirty-eight point four million dollar extension. Do you guys think that the Warriors should offer the extension to Draymond? And if no, what team do you think should pick up Draymond? And I do have a follow-up question after you guys' answers, but Hoop, we'll start with you. I think it's similar to a James Harden situation where you feel like with all that Draymond's done, you should be paying him for what he's done. But then again, like you're paying him for the future. Um, so I don't think he's really worth a max deal like that, especially if he's not shooting the ball. That's something I would put a, a clause on. Draymond, you need to be shooting three pointers for an hour and a half a day with the trainer because he's clearly made it not a priority. And while they sneaked by last year, I think there's an opportunity where they play a tough Clippers team. I think the playoff run this upcoming year, if everyone's healthy, would be much more difficult than last year. I'm not trying to say they had a fluke run, but a healthy Draymond shooting three pointers makes that offense so much more dangerous as Steph and Clay get older. Um, but I think without that, and he's a triple single guy, I understand the leadership, I understand the playmaking, I understand the defense. It's kind of hard for a max. I mean, I understand if guys like MPJ are getting maxes, like I could see it, I could see it there, um, because they really they really give anyone a max. But when you're a Warriors uh who already has guys like in place, like Andrew Wiggins, Jordan Poole, and you want to keep them for a while, I don't know, and you're a big market too, like you could get free agents, you're not like Denver. Um, I don't I don't really think he's worth the max like that unless he's really going to show that he can be valuable for that contract specifically in shooting i i agree with who uh, on this i think that draymond obviously we understand i think that every nba fan can understand why draymond green would get a max contract specifically for the golden state warriors for all that he's done throughout their run and their dynasty but like hoop said you got to look at the competition moving forward and the pieces that you have already put in place to set you up for the future. Like, so I'm thinking who else could that deal potentially go to, to set them up better for the future? You know, Steph's going to get locked down. You know, Clay's probably going to get locked down. And that big three has been like the focal point of their success for the past six years. But with guys that are rising up like Jordan Poole, Andrew Wiggins, and you, and like you said, they are a free market team. Draymond Green has been a catalyst for bringing, he was a catalyst for bringing in Kevin Durant, like Hoop said earlier before the show started, uh, was a catalyst for also trying to bring in DeMar DeRozan uh, this offseason. So I think that Draymond's definitely a guy who needs to shoot the ball like he did back in the day. 2016, Draymond was, was out of this world. I remember that game winner he hit when Steph got hurt in the regular season. I think they were playing like Portland or something. Draymond hit like some sidestep fadeaway for for the game. I, I don't know if it banked in. If it was Draymond, it probably did. But it was cool. Like it was like at least he was at least you looked down and you were like Steph's not here. Who's gonna take the final shot? Draymond Green. All right, bet cool. And he, he was down. tough. He was tough. He was tough. Game seven. Game seven. Twenty sixteen. Oh. Draymond had what like thirty two. Yeah, yeah. he was, he was going. Yes, yeah. he was shooting like, like a like a like a freshman with a backpack on. I gotta pull up those stats right now. I keep yeah, talking. Pull, yeah. So I'm saying you, you you got Draymond Green and he back then Draymond was actually dangerous because you really didn't know as a defender what he was gonna do. You didn't know if you could leave him open. You didn't know if you could uh, if he drives in. You're gonna bring two guys to trap with the fear of him kicking out or getting a foul, like all these different things. When you have a guy like that who can bring the ball to the floor and can knock down the open shots that you need him to knock down, he's obviously, like, you know, essential. So I, was, I would definitely say that a max would, would make sense. It would definitely make sense moving forward, but it could be complicated when, when those young guys are rising up and they want to, you know, get their money too. So, Sandy, but what would you think? Like, I, I do like the points you guys have both brought up. And while I do think what Draymond has done for the Warriors leading up to this point is worth the money, we're not talking about what he's done up to now. We're talking about the future, obviously. Um, clearly, Draymond and the Warriors have a great relationship. Um, and I think that, ah, like, if the Warriors want to have a future, they're going to need to keep guys like Wiggins, Poole, uh, come bucket. Uh, Moses Moody, right? Like they have all these young guys, and they're not going to be able to keep. All How do you say that so seriously? <laughs> but seriously, you, like you just threw it in there. They're not going to be able to keep all these guys uh, if they're going to offer Draymond this contract. You know what I mean? 
Um, if I were the Warriors, honestly, and, and from my perspective, I think what Draymond does right now, and I'm not talking what he's done before. Obviously, Draymond was a huge, huge part to the Warriors dynasty. Nobody's denying that. But I think right now, you know, as age starts to creep up on him, I think if I were the Warriors, I'd offer him, I wouldn't even offer him a four-year deal, first of all. I think four years is too long. Um, I don't see Draymond having the same impact as he does right now in 2026. You know what I mean? Um, I would offer him like a three-year $80 million deal, $70 million deal. I think that's more in their ballpark where once that contract is up, they can use that money to offer to their young guys, right? Because only three more years, like your young guys can stick around for a little longer. And then once Draymond's contract's up, they can offer the young guys some money. If Draymond wants to stay, you keep him on a vet minimum. But I think four year, a hundred near $140 million is too much for him. Uh, and if Draymond wants to leave and Draymond believes he earns that, he deserves that money. And to be fair, like what he's done, you can not say he does deserve it. Uh, which does lead to my follow-up question: What team do you think should pick up Draymond? Uh, no, there's no one. There's no one who's given him a max, bro. You would be surprised. There. You would be surprised. I, I, I mean, surprised. for the vocal leadership, like just sign him to the coaching staff. Like, I, I not don't know. only the vocal Honestly. leadership, like what he does on the court, you would be surprised. If I was a GM, would I sign him to a max contract it, on any other team but the Warriors? No. But you got to remember, no. the <sighs> NBA is the same league that Timofey Mozgov and Luol Deng. There's Got more it. talent now. There's way more talent. There and Draymond is. Green, when he fits so well with the Warriors, I mean, I know that the GM sometimes it feels like we're smarter than them. But when you see that work well with Steph Curry and Klay Thompson, the best two shooters on the planet, why would it work with my team? I'll give you an you example know? right now. If like a small market team like Portland, if Portland had the opportunity to pick up Draymond, I think they would. I think they I would. Man. For the money, think, for the money that, that people... you, like, I think they would. And, and here's why, Hoop. You got to remember, small market teams, they can only build through the draft, right? But when you're a team like Portland, when you have a 32, 31-year-old Damian Lillard, you have all these young guys around them, and you're still not a championship team. You're like one or two pieces away. I can't understand that. You, yeah. need to, you need to pull the trigger on anything you can right now because you don't have enough time to, to wait around for and free Simmons to develop to his max potential. You don't have enough time to see how Jeremy Grant is going to mold with Damian Lillard. You don't have enough time to see if you can pick up another second star to replace CJ McCollum. So if you see Draymond Green on the market, you got to pull the trigger. And there's a lot of teams right now, I believe that would pull the trigger on Draymond. Should the Warriors do it? To be honest, no, because they have a solid young foundation that they can rely on once Steph, Clay, and Draymond leave. Portland doesn't have that right now. Portland I personally happen. think that uh, Draymond's just trying to drive the price up. I right. think he wants to be with the Warriors, but it wouldn't. I wouldn't be surprised if he if he leaves for a max. Like Honestly, he feels same. like someone that just he's, he thinks he's worth his his money, and he's less like. I feel like Clay could possibly take a pay cut. Draymond, I feel like he just wants his bag. Yeah, because like he just seems like that personality. Clay was injured for two years um, or whatever. Yeah, right? exactly. so he got like Dray two years of free money <clears throat> off his contract. Yeah, to Clay. So Clay, I feel like I agree with you there. He would take a pay cut, but. In terms of Draymond, like he's already built his legacy at the Warriors. I don't really yeah. see the Warriors winning another ring, to be honest. I think the West is way too stacked for the Warriors to make another run. Uh, I can see it happens. if you get quick development this year. True. If, if True. Wiseman yeah. has quick development, but it's gonna it's gonna take that because there's too many solidified teams. Exactly. Um, and you can't have any fall off either with right. Steph, Clay, or Draymond. Right. Yeah. But I, I just pulled up his Draymond's uh, 2016 Game Seven log: 32 yes, points, sir. 15 boards, nine assists. Two steals, only only two turnovers. Uh, he shot six for eight from three. This was this was prime Draymond, and this no, is what I was, was talking that's about. The greatest if you're gonna, the game. The if you're gonna, game of his career. yeah, bro. If you're gonna give him a max, make him shoot the ball because he, he really used to. He, and that, he, wait, wait. he could really shoot it. And saying that is not a hit to Draymond Green. Game seven no, NBA Finals no. to put up stats like that. That is that's impressive. crazy. That is like insane. That that might be one of the greatest Finals performances of all time. Like that has to be top yeah. twenty Finals performance. Top twenty. Yeah, and uh, then it was like it was Jerry West esque for me because you putting up all. All those stats just to lose to greatness. I mean, it's crazy. It's honestly crazy. So I know Draymond definitely should shoot the ball a lot more. And it's so annoying too because, like, you got to think this. This used to not. This used to not be a problem for him. They would. Yeah, yeah bro. Right he'll up. he'll pump it twice and then fake a floater, then throw up a little bunny, and yeah. it just like bounces off back iron, bro. <laughs> exactly. Draymond <laughs> used to be. His bag was so deep. It's or he'll dish to Juan Toscano and, Anderson and, and, and for see, a high I, contested I, I, shot. I, I love how you say that because that just further backs up my point. Like age is creeping up on Draymond, while what he's done before would deserve that money. What he's going to do in the future, I don't think would yeah, deserve that money. Yeah. But there's a he lot of teams still... that would pull the trigger on that off chance that Draymond could return to that state for a few years. And it's crazy too because his defense, like his defense, hasn't really slowed down too noticeably. He's still the best defender on the team. Besides, yeah, he was, yeah. He was in the I think the only, he's just, he got injured. 
Yeah, I think he's just lost a half step on the perimeter. That's it. Yeah. yeah. I, I think that he'll probably – him and Andre will probably mentor Wiggins to get to that point to be able to be that solidified, like, third option. I hope so I, I hope the Warriors can work something out and Draymond where they, like, meet in the middle sort of, and then at the end of that contract, Draymond stays on a vet minimum or joins the coaching staff because I really would hate to see Draymond on any other team but the Warriors. But anything, yeah. anything can happen. I know we weren't planning on talking about this, but I want to extend this just a little bit. Because I'm looking at the Warriors right now as like a sped up version of the Celtics when they dished off Paul Pierce, Kevin Garnett to the Nets. Right. And that set up the Jason Tatum, Jalen Brown situation. The Warriors have James Wiseman. They have Jordan Poole, Andrew Wiggins, and you still have the past. So is there a way, do you think in the future, obviously business wise, would it make sense if the Warriors aren't a top team in the West anymore to try to maybe like get assets for clay and draymond like obviously it would be a stab in the back but at the same time if you're going to set up for the future like it's a business do you think that's a possibility here's the thing i wouldn't call it a stab in the back if both parties are aware of what's going to happen like if they sat down with clay and draymond and were like honestly guys like we have young guys that we want to focus on you guys wouldn't have as big of a role in your career uh, with this franchise anymore that's just the hard truth we can send you guys out somewhere where you would have a bigger role you guys can end your career off somewhere else obviously you're a warrior forever and we could also build on our brand because at the end of the day as much as clay draymond steph have done for the warriors we've seen it time and time again where a legend who's done so much for a team will still end up leaving because that's just the nba you're never it's not mm -hmm. a fairy tale where you're going to win every single season you're going to get exactly what you want clay thompson's a perfect example comes back from an acl tear just to tear it in training camp right yeah like anything can happen so i think that you know as long as communication is there between clay and i don't think they're ever going to get rid of steph to be honest i think steph is a no no he's going to play it out he's yeah. going to play it out but clay and draymond i don't see why not if the this the time came right if he wants he can have a farewell tour with the knicks the team that was going to draft him but the warriors stole him <laughs> yeah. but i'll uh, uh i'll leave it there uh, I'm, anyway. I'm happy it's like because the warrior the knicks didn't pass up on steph like they were about to take him but that's a story for another day. It's a sad day for Knicks what, fans. What was it? Uh, also, the Timberwolves drafted Rubio and Johnny Flynn over Steph. <laughs> Johnny Flynn, that was a tough name. They had two picks ahead of Steph. And they picked two guards. They picked two guards. That's crazy. Two guards. Two point hey, guards. Hey, Ricky was tough, though, for a little bit. Yeah, well, for who the hell is Johnny bit. Flynn? All right, you know what? No disrespect. Johnny <laughs> Flynn, I'm sure you're a baller. But, like, seriously, over Steph? <laughs> but let's Come continue. Come on, bro. Anyway, we're going to move into the next segment, and this one is called smackdown versus raw ladies and gentlemen dwight howard uh recently went out to a wwe tryout and it's actually interesting because me and sandy obviously know about you know world wrestling entertainment we grew up with actually good childhoods hoop on the other hand never knew about the wwe and didn't know that there are two brands called smackdown and raw Saney tried to bring up an analogy where it's like conferences in the NBA, which is pretty close, but Hoop still looked baffled and completely dumbfounded. No, I, I understood after that. I just thought yeah, I like know, all, all the commercials I ever saw for wrestling was WWE SmackDown. And when I tried to name the segment that Saney, uh, they, they gave me the side eye. Wait, wait, like wait, I, wait, like wait, I, Hoop, I was crazy. Hoop, have you what ever owned a PlayStation kid? 2? Have you ever owned a PlayStation 2 as a kid? No, I was a. Oh. I had the Wii, and then I got the PlayStation Four when I was in like eighth grade. See, that explains it. This guy has okay, never owned that... a SmackDown versus Raw. Hoop, you spent like, a lot of. Time you were playing outside, SmackDown versus Raw two thousand seven or two thousand eight. I just was, no, because yeah. I was the oldest, and like I didn't have older brothers that played video games, so I was I was the trendsetter. Okay, okay, okay. Right, you know it's fair, it's fair. We'll let it slide. We'll let it slide. Nonetheless, uh, how this ties into our headline is: we're going to take some NBA players, and we are going to see who would probably win in a WWE matchup, a Monday Night Raw main event, a Friday Night SmackDown main event. So the first matchup that I have for you guys starts off with Dwight Howard himself. Dwight Howard versus Shaquille O'Neal, the battle of the Supermen, I guess. Prime oh, for who, prime? Prime for prime. Who wins in a WWE throwdown slobber knocker? <laughs> Does Shaq not have like 60 pounds on him, at least? Yeah, prime like, Shaq? Like, this is an easy question. Like, I don't think that's much of a... Hey, hey you, you know? don't think... White Howard has a whole lot of charisma, man. I don't know. He charisma? Kinda... <laughs> yeah. Charisma I'm... gets you over in WWE. I'm trying to tell you. Look at Rey Mysterio. They had Rey Mysterio going up against the Big Show, the Great Khali, all these eight-footers, and we're like, what? I'm so disappointed like, in myself on, right now because I have a Rey Mysterio mask, and I didn't put it on for this episode. Oh, my God. And I don't want to get up and get it because it's going to make noise. But, I mean, it's obviously prime <laughs> Shaquille O'Neal. 
Okay. I don't, I don't know much about wrestling, but I know if he gets you on top of you, you're not, you're not getting up. <laughs> you're oh, not so. getting up. Shaq with a sumo slam. Let's do it. All right, cool. The next matchup that we have is reminiscent of last season. We have, this is an interesting one. We have a two-on-three handicap match. No, a three-on-three <laughs> match. We have a three-on-three six-man match. The Jokic brothers versus the Morris twins and Jimmy Butler with the new Kofi Kingston hairstyle that he has. But yeah, who wins that I'm taking that the, Jokic the Jokic brothers. The Jokic <laughs> brothers. If they were, were from anywhere else but Serbia... I would I would pick the Morris guys and Jimmy Butler, but I don't I don't know what they're feeding them they over play, there, bro. They don't, they don't play over there, bro. They don't I don't play know over what there. they're feeding there over there, bro. I don't know. I don't know. The if, if it was the Jokic bros, I feel like they'd be like the the most deadliest WWE trio of all time. And I'm <laughs> and I don't mean a pun to be intended, but they would literally they would destroy those kids. Oh my god. Oh my god. The well, final one is for Sani, because I genuinely want to see this. I genuinely would love to see this. I feel like some NBA fans would love to see it. We got Joel Embiid versus Russell Westbrook. Westbrook. You, who, Westbrook. Your face. Which, Westbrook. What, what face you making? Westbrook why, is why, why working that man any day of the week, bro. And wrestling? Westbrook is wor- Oh, uh, wrestling. Okay, it's different because, bro, you're giving us a <gasps> seven-foot man compared to a 6'3 guy. You know what I mean? That's and not I a fair comparison. And I also told you. Okay, you got to. Wrestling? Okay, I, like a better comparison would be like Pat Bev and Westbrook. No, that this is how I sense. look at it. You got you to gotta see how it is in ZZ's head, all right? So you have Joel Embiid, a seven-foot African Thundercat or wherever he's from, right? <laughs> and then you have Russell Emmerin. Westbrook, Russell Westbrook, who is literally like an angry Rus- – he's- Russell Westbrook is the bipolar <laughs> version of Rey Mysterio. That's wait, wait, wait. I, I was just going to say, bipolar wait, wait. And- didn't, didn't Rey Mysterio uh, beat the big show? Rey Mysterio has beaten the big show. Oh, Westbrook. Rey Mysterio has Westbrook. beaten – Westbrook. Exactly. Westbrook. Thank Westbrook. You. Thank you. Westbrook. I think – I'm just saying. I Westbrook. think Russ – with them anger issues, would win. he might like he might grab a would steel win. chair and like. Bro, he's hitting a six one nine on Joel Embiid. <laughs> I'm just saying. I'm, I mean, might, unless he could him. just take that chair to the nuts, I don't think Every there's a I way. Every time I see Westbrook dunk, now all I'm gonna think is Buyaka, Buyaka. Oh my God, Buyaka, Buyaka. Right. I'm not gonna lie, he he could do some damage though in like a like a a boxing match. I could see that kind of yeah, he's energy. But in wrestling though, like once once some B gets grappled on, that's tough, man. Hoop, you gotta think this is the WWE, so they could be like, this is extreme rules. West you Brooks know is- Russell Westbrook don't give no Fs. So he's gonna go out there, grab a steel chair. As someone who's never pipe. watched re- wrestling, I'll trust you on this one. I'm like imagine you, bro, Westbrook Russell- jumping off uh jumping off the that was, yeah. like, with that bro, that's some Nacho oh Libre God. stuff, yeah. bro. What do y'all what do y'all think that Russell Westbrook's like finisher would be called? I feel like uh, no, I know Joel's would be called like the, like trust the process, like something like something. Westbrook. Like that. It would just be called Westbrook, and it would just be him. The angry box the... turtle deluxe. <laughs> <laughs> I was, oh my god! Bro. Also, I, I bought that the... one at, from you. I got that from you. I hate the Westbrook angry nickname, by the way. I hate the Westbrook nickname. <laughs> Why? Why? Because it's, it's disrespectful. If Skip Bayless can go on Twitter and call him Russell Westbrook and tell him to pull up if he got a problem with it. <laughs> I just feel like we can say he's an angry box turtle. Show some, you know what it is? Show like, some respect, Z. Show some respect. I do want to. I do want to talk about that Skip quote <laughs> because people said, you know, Skip's uh, he's like seventy years old, and of course he would tell Russ to come on the show because he can't punch him. If you got like a thirty-year-old Skip Bayless, I think he'd do the same exact thing, bro. Hell yeah. Ah, but so that, that, Skip built that, in his thirties. Like, what if he just started hitting the gym? No, that's that's the only reason. Like, like I, I don't like Skip at all. But like I have a tiny ounce of respect for him, just the fact that he says it to their face and means it. No, no, no. Because I, I do think he would be that kind of guy. No, no. Mine's not a tiny ounce of respect. I have a like, like I think Skip is ridiculous, but he he's has better some than balls. everyone else on Twitter because Twitter people balls. just talk. Yeah, no, he has some balls. Like he will, he will say anything yeah. on his mind. You want to know why? You want to know why he has balls? And it's not just because of Manscaped. It's because when he looks at his freaking speed dial list and he sees Lil Tunchi, if he sees Lil Tunchi on that list. He already knows Lil Wayne got some got some goons with him. So if Russ pulls up with his wife, Lil Wayne's just gonna be there dropping like just bodies, bodies, bodies. Like he's just gonna be ready to rumble. That's All what right. you gotta think. He's got the cash money gangsta on his side, and he's got he's going up against an angry box turtle. He's gonna be chilling. All right, let's. You just uh, brought Russ's wife into this too. Oh yeah. my god, <laughs> what's your deal, bro? Enough, uh, enough with the I feel wife. Like talk. basketball enough players' the- wives don't get enough credit, bro. <laughs> like Savannah James. So you bring your, Savannah so, James. You, so you bring it so you bring the wives into the fighting talks? Hell yeah, bro. You see Rondo and his wife beat up somebody in a parking lot before? Like, <laughs> yes. That's like real love right there. Like I need some of that. Like like come on, bro. All right, I need right. somebody that's gonna fight with me in a Walmart or something. I let's don't know. Uh, let's uh let's move on here. <laughs> 
Oh my god, I'm sorry. Are they tweaking? ZZ Honcho. <laughs> no, I'm kidding, I'm kidding. Alright, so uh, <laughs> last, last episode, which was episode 8, I believe, we were talking <laughs> Luca versus Steph. We got very heated again. Whenever Steph comes up, it gets very heated because we have a new Warriors fan in here. Cough, cough. ZZ no, I feel Huncho. like cough, deep cough. in his heart, he's always been a Warriors fan. No, I think so too. But I do think it was the right decision for him because I could totally see that. A lot um, of people say that. I'm glad. But uh, we talked about floor raising versus ceiling raising and that Luka Doncic is more of a floor raiser where he gets a lot of stats, gives his team a lot of regular season wins, can carry them on his back more so than a ceiling raiser, which, in my opinion, doesn't make a, f- a floor uh, ceiling raiser is not worse than a floor raiser, but they're more inconsistent. They're still incredibly skilled, but they're kind of like the cherry on top. Um, and Saney, last episode, was getting heated in the moment and said floor raisers are always better than ceiling raisers. We're talking about Luka Doncic be- being better than Steph Curry. Saney, what do you mean by this? Do you actually believe it? And I want to see an example of what floor raisers you think are better than what ceiling raisers. I really like that you brought this quote up, Hoop, uh, because I feel like uh, I'm obviously going to get taken out of context. Not that it's anybody else's fault but mine, but we were in a heated debate. And, you know, when there's four people in a pod, you got to get your point out quick before somebody, you know, obviously jumps in. Um, My, like, I wasn't saying in general floor raisers are always better than ceiling raisers. What I meant was I would rather Luca's floor raising ability over Stephen Curry's ceiling raising ability right now. Don't bring all time into this. Don't don't put words in my mouth to all you viewers. But I'm just saying right now, I think Luca's floor raising ability makes him better than Steph Curry with Steph Curry's ceiling raising ability, if you know what I'm trying to say, right? Um, but anyway, back to your point. I know you said you wanted me to mention floor raisers that I thought were better than some ceiling raisers. Yes. Um... Well, I kind of have like some obvious ones, but just guys that have played together. For example, LeBron was the floor raiser. Kyrie Irving was the ceiling raiser on the Cavaliers, right? LeBron James, obviously the more crucial part to that Cavs team than Kyrie Irving. Uh, James Harden, to me, he's a floor raiser. Uh, I think he's one of the the best floor raisers we've seen in the game. Uh, By himself, he's taken teams to another level. Chris Paul on that Houston team was a ceiling raiser. Um, without Chris Paul, I think the Rockets, the Rockets still like held, held up their own against the Warriors. I know they had that I one think bad game. Chris but... Paul in general is a floor raiser though. In general, no, hundred percent. That's why I said on the Houston team. That's why I said okay. on the Houston yeah, team. Okay. He's like both, honestly. On that Houston no, team just... though, on that Houston team though, he was a ceiling raiser. You know uh, it with OKC. Yeah. That he yeah. was a, yeah. he was he a floor was a, raiser. Oh, Nobody he was amazing. No, no, hundred percent. I love Chris Paul, but for that one specific stunt or run in his career, he was a ceiling mm-hmm. raiser. Um, Jokic is a floor raiser. Jamal Murray is a ceiling raiser. Um, I think without Jamal Murray, I, I mean, not I think, we've seen it. Without Jamal Murray, the Nuggets still are a playoff team. Jokic can still take them to that first round, possibly second round, depending on the matchup. Jamal Murray wouldn't have done anything with the Nuggets if Jokic was the one out. You know what I mean? Yes. Uh, but with Jamal Murray there, they go to the Western Conference Finals. Right? Perfect mm-hmm. ceiling raiser, in my opinion. Um... Bringing back Chris Paul again. Chris Paul, floor raiser for the Suns. Devin Booker is a ceiling raiser. I think Devin Booker is a heavy ceiling raiser. I, I think I don't think they have a true floor raiser. I, I think th- the Suns as a team, because I, I saw it when both of them were out. And it, unfortunately, that was when Cam Johnson hit that buzzer beater against the Knicks when Alec Burks missed the free <laughs> but throws. But it's the Knicks. They're playing the, the Knicks. Shot. They're playing the Knicks, bro. A fully healthy Knicks with Julius Randle. That's, that's not a bad team, right? You guys not are going to... All right. Well, since... We're going to go into it's our first challenge. little argument here because so far you guys have agreed with me on everything. But let's see let's see what you guys think about this one. A floor raiser is Russell Westbrook and a ceiling raiser is Kevin Durant. What year? 2012, I'm assuming. Just in general, like as two players that have Brian played Brian Russell Westbrook is one of the best floor raisers floor raiser. we've ever seen. Yeah. I think Kevin Durant can be a floor raiser, but I think looking back on his career, I would think of him more as a ceiling raiser than a floor raiser. If Kevin Durant's I, career ended today, I would, see I would look at him as nothing more than a hired hitman. Someone that can walk into your team when you desperately need somebody to go get the bully. Like Skip and Shannon debate about all the time. They're like, oh, the Warriors lost, and then they needed to beat LeBron. They had to, so they, who do they call? Kevin Durant. And to Skip's credit, he always brings up those two pivotal game threes from those back-to-back years. And he's like, he went into his house. And he, and, he, and, he, and he went up against LeBron and in his face just just nails it, quiets the crowd. 
Kevin Durant, best player on the planet. Here's the thing: himself. when it comes to the Warriors, I think Draymond was that floor raiser, and then Kevin Durant, Clay, and Steph were all ceiling raisers. The Warriors are built in a way where they they only need ceiling raisers, and Draymond's kind of that that floorboard. But for yeah. example, in 2016, but in they, general, they, they I, I think Kevin Dur- they crumbled well, I think when Draymond got out. When Draymond got suspended, that's when the Warriors crumbled. Yeah, it's easy to yeah. it's it's easy to look at Kevin Durant as a ceiling raiser when he's on the Warriors since he already joined a team that was built. I didn't need him. <laughs> but everywhere else, I I think with Brooklyn he was definitely a floor raiser. Like if you talk about the playoffs, like yeah. him they they're not going anywhere without a healthy Kevin Durant because they, they saw it hard in Kyrie Irving. They didn't go anywhere with a healthy Kevin Durant either. I mean, what they were like, about to. That's what I'm saying. We were talking about yeah. the foot thing earlier. In the, like, in the Bucks in the Bucks series, Kevin Durant was playing to be competitive with the Bucks like that. Like, he didn't sit down a single minute in Game Six and Seven, and literally was a was a shoe size away from sending his team to the conference finals. Like I, I don't care if you hate Kevin Durant, I don't care if you love Kevin Durant, but that is a fact. Like right. Oh, there I'll never. In, I, in I, I never base my opinion on my, like any basketball opinion on what well, I feel about a player. Like let's I'll test give it. it let's test it. Is is, ceil- is ceiling raiser Kevin Durant better than floor raising MVP Russell yeah. Westbrook? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I'm, I'll I'm never, I'll never shot. give an opinion. <laughs> I'll never give an opinion on a basketball player uh, through a biased view, especially on this pod. I, I think of myself as a very unbiased person when it comes to takes. Um, I obviously I would take Kevin Durant ceiling raising over Russell Westbrook's floor raising, but that doesn't change my opinion on. I think Kevin Durant is looked as more of a ceiling raiser, and he performs much better as a ceiling raiser as a floor raiser. Um, or as a ceiling raiser, I feel like he's done much, much more than what he was able to accomplish as a floor raiser. And that's why when I look back on his career, I would think of Kevin Durant as more of a ceiling raiser because I feel like that ceiling raising ability he has is what really cemented his legacy, not his floor raising. I, I can I can see where you're coming from. I think a lot of that has to do with leadership, and Kevin Durant is not, since, not a leader. I mean, he's, he's bounced down to so many teams. I would, never, I would under, never choose Kevin Durant as a leader. He's not really a leader. And I saw, uh, I believe it was Player's Choice, they were talking about Dwayne Wade compared to Kevin Durant, right? right? Bad comparison. But in terms of leadership, Dwayne Wade is totally a floor raiser. Oh, and yeah. I know we're, we're kind of getting off topic, but LeBron James is one of the best floor raisers of all time. Mm. So do you <laughs> think that Miami had two floor raisers at one time, or do you no. think one of them was a ceiling raiser? And I love how you brought that up. I think Dwayne Wade was a heavy ceiling raiser because if you look at Dwayne Wade, especially after 2011, his career fell off compared to what we saw Dwayne Wade, what we were used to seeing Dwayne Wade do before that. You know prime Dwayne I mean? Wade, though, is a, oh, is a crazy Dwayne Wade is floor the, raiser. Like, for one example, Shaq, Shaq was a ceiling raiser on team. that Miami 2006 team. Shaq was a ceiling raiser. He was not the floor raiser of that team. Dwayne Wade was 100% the leader, and Dwayne Wade was 100% the main reason why they won. Shaq was obviously right. a big, big, big role, had played a big role in that, but Dwayne Wade, up until LeBron joined the Heat, he was a floor raiser. And then when LeBron yeah. came, he obviously took a step back because the one thing I love about Dwayne Wade and the one thing I like respect so much about his career was his ability to control his ego. I don't think Dwayne Wade ever had an ego problem where he had no. an issue taking a step back. Right. And we've seen that. We saw that in the four years he was with LeBron, he took a step back. And when LeBron left, he understood that his age was catching up to him. So he once again took it. Like when Hassan Whiteside came in, he let Hassan Whiteside develop. He gave Hassan yeah. Whiteside those touches. Without Dwayne Wade, I don't think Hassan Whiteside ever has that one run in his career where he... Dwayne Wade got Hassan Whiteside $80 million. Like and then dipped. Yeah, and he went then to dipped. Chicago and Cleveland. That was a mess. And then in oh, Chicago, Chicago, he let Jimmy be the main guy. You know what I mean? He took a step back. Like everywhere he went, he took a step back. If he understood that he wasn't best player, that's um, that's exactly why Wade is not only Wade are Wade and LeBron my favorite duo ever. Because when I was a kid, I kind of would catch on. I would watch a couple of uh, after twenty eleven specifically. I would watch some sports shows and debate shows, and they would be saying how like Dwayne Wade literally had that conversation with Braun, and he was like, "You're the guy, right?" Let me sit back and be kind of the leader, but you do your thing. You got to do your thing. You are completely you. Have, you have free reign to do whatever you want. And then 2012, Braun, we get Game Six against Boston, and then 2013, we get Game Seven against San Antonio. Mm. But the thing is, is what made them such a powerful duo is some duos can be like, you know, neck for like shot for shot with each other, head to head, right? Kobe and Shaq, for example. But D Wade and LeBron were D Wade and LeBron were different. Because we literally saw a mature, like you said, a mature D Wade letting LeBron do his thing, and when the moment came, one of them's gonna throw up a oop to each other, one of them's gonna sit back and let the other take game. Like it was just they played so smart, and it was so awesome to see that. So yeah, um, I agree with you 100. We are going a little off topic here, so back to the ceiling and floor oh. raiser debate. 
uh, hoop. I don't know if you want to. I, can I in. can I interject just yeah, yeah. one time? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Talking about ceiling floor raising and Kobe and Shaq. Uh, can you say that Kobe was a ceiling raiser for most of his career? Uh, I don't know if I would say most. Of his I don't career, know if that's Shaq, a crazy. Shaq let's talk about on, let's talk about the title teams. Okay, with Pau Gasol. <gasps> You know, if we're talking, think that's if we're talking crazy? rings, like Kobe was only a floor raiser for two of those rings, mm -hmm. with Powell, and then yeah. with with Shaq, Shaq was obviously the floor floor raiser, and Kobe was the ceiling raiser. So it's that not, gives you a different Kobe perspective, was, though. Ah, that's yeah, a great Kobe. point because, like, I would say for most of Kobe's career, he was a floor raiser because Shaq left early on, right? And Kobe, what was like? 15? I think there's a difference between being a floor raiser though and having no one else on your team. Yeah, because Kobe was the only. Th I mean, yeah. let's be honest. Kobe's teams were bad sometimes. I think he's a natural, high ceiling like raiser. one of the best ceiling raisers yeah, ever. Hundred percent. He just he couldn't lead his team. I mean, obviously the teams had nothing. Yeah. But the teams that he was on by himself, they were hot cheeks. You know? I agree. I agree. I think. I think. I think it's better <laughs> but, uh, to look at Kobe as a ceiling raiser than it is a floor raiser because when it came down to it and they needed to win, most times Kobe was the ceiling raiser. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, but back, Just to say that. let's let's stay in the floor raising ceiling raising debate because I still have a few more questions. Who do you think is a better floor raiser of all time? We're not talking better player. Who was better at floor raising, right? Russell Westbrook prime or James Harden prime? I think honestly. Oh, go ahead. Uh, I'm gonna say my answer. For right. Me. I think James Harden was an underrated passer in his prime. Mm -hmm. And I think the system that develops around him is more effective in winning playoff games than Russell Westbrook's system that developed around him. Right. I think Russell Westbrook can get the same amount of wins as a prime James Harden team, but that system, it's more difficult to, especially in today's NBA, like James Harden, you know, that was, that was revolutionary what he was doing. And I think the system that develops around him being on the court is more effective than it would be Russell Westbrook. Not that one's a better player than the other, but simply because of the style of play. Right. I I I don't know honestly because I look at it from like like Hoop said they had two different systems, two different situations. I would say I'm thinking about the fact that James Harden had Dwight Howard 2015. Right. He had someone. I think that Dwight Howard in 2015 was better than Stephen Adams was for Russell Westbrook in 2017. Because, I mean, him, like you said, he was passing and throwing up lobs or whatever. They were trying to figure out how to play with each other. But then you look at 2017, 2018. Uh, what I'm Chris looking Paul, at. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. But I, when I look at, when I think about Prom Russ, like that 2017 season was yeah. crazy. Like he, mm. like you literally, every single game that the Thunder played that year, going into it, I'm like, how many, is he going to have a triple-double? And if he does have a triple-double, how many rebounds and how many assists is he going to have? Because it isn't going to be a 20-10-10. It's going to be a 30, 15, 13. Like, yeah, Russ right. was going stupid. And then you're sitting there as a fan. Like, every, I think everybody loved Russell Westbrook that season, specifically because Kevin Durant left him high and dry. Right. But you got to see Russ go out there. And we knew Russ was a type of player that gives it 110% every single game. But that year, it was like life or death, blood, sweat, tears, leave it all on the court for your team. Mm. Even that Denver game where he, had the, where he broke the record right. and it's the game winner. It was just like... It, it just was something that was very fun to watch for me. And I would say that I think Russ has a slight edge in his, uh, I guess, reliability right. or being there for his team than Harden did because Harden had guys like Trevor Reza, Corey Brewer. I can understand Dwight that. Howard. You know what I'm saying? Corey he Brewer. Just, Hey, Corey Brewer was a bucket. Stop playing with them. <laughs> Corey, Brewer dropped 50 I, points. I, I, Corey Brewer dropped 50 points one time, and that's all he did. I was, I was thinking with James Harden and Russ uh, – Harden with with Eric Gordon. I wasn't thinking Harden with Paul, but like season for season. But oh, I understand yeah, yeah, yeah. Russ has proved himself to be a more consistent floor raiser, and for that reason, I could see Russ being over Harden as a floor raiser. Yeah, yeah I'm taking him. Love Harden though. Harden's better, I guess, a better player. But I'm taking I'm taking MVP Russ. I'm taking Harden. <gasps> yeah, well, I mean, Harden's walking sixty points. Yeah, that's, that's in his prime. And I'll explain why. While I do one hundred percent. Uh, believe Westbrook is one of the greatest floor raisers of all time. I have Westbrook in my top five point guards of all time. Um, I think Westbrook, Debatable. obviously, I'm a big Westbrook guy, right? But like I said, I never give a biased take. And if I'm thinking of it, um, the best, one of one of my best ways to come to a conclusion and to make sure I'm not being biased is I always use the gun to my head scenario, right? <laughs> wow. I love to use wow. that because that's how I know my true colors. That's Suicidal. how I know like what I truly 
how, how I'll truly decide on something is I always think if there's a gun in my head and someone tells me you got to pick the right answer, which one am I going to pick? The only reason I say James Harden is because we have seen James Harden time and time again without before Chris Paul game perform in the playoffs. Like he's taken his team deep in the playoffs yeah. with, with yeah. mediocre teams. Russell Westbrook, hate to say it, it's never been past the first round with the, and le- except for that one year with James Harden. The only time he made it past the second round without Kevin Durant was with James Harden, right? Westbrook can't win in the playoffs. And yeah, you could say his team was trash and all that. I wouldn't say James Harden's team was that much better than Westbrook's throughout those years, right? I wouldn't. Antony was a big part of that, but the system was yeah. more effective in winning games. Sure. Like, there's a lot of factors that go into it. I, I, I agree with that 100%. But I'm, I am a firm believer that James Harden would not only be a NBA champion, but a multiple like have multiple NBA rings if it wasn't for the Warriors. Like I think the only thing that really held back James Harden's legacy was the Warriors. And I think if I the think Warriors they would dominate the West and dominate. they would be that team that dominate. gets stacked. Dominate. And that and they would have they would have started that domination. The game. They would have started that domination before the Houston Rockets had Chris Paul and had like a, a way better team around them. They were getting 60 high 50 plus wins without Chris Paul. Yeah. And that was yeah. mainly due to James Harden. Russell Westbrook his MVP season he went 45 and 37. It's not a terrible record considering the team that the Oklahoma City Thunder had. But uh, correct me if I'm wrong, I believe they were like a 7th seed, 6th seed, right? James Harden was always getting home court advantage in the playoffs. James Harden proved by himself he can take whatever team you put him on. He's tween, 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 step back, and he's dropping 50 every night. You know what I mean? I'm a number one Westbrook guy. I've seen that guy miss 40 shots in a game before. That can happen, right? When James Harden misses shots in a game, it's like... It's a more rare occurrence than Russell Westbrook if we're talking prime for prime. That's why That's I got to take Harden as a floor raiser because I feel like Harden could take a whatever. If you put Harden and Westbrook on the same exact team, I think Harden takes that team farther than Westbrook. That's fair. That's uh, fair. But we can I, move before, on. Yeah, before we move on, Z, we were singing earlier. I'd love to hear a ZZ Huncho cover of XXX, Tentacion. <laughs> of, of, of X? What song? <laughs> no, the song you were singing. That wasn't X, dude. That was YW and Melly and Juice. Suicidal. Oh, that one. Hoop, we got to get you more culture. But just before we end the ceiling of Flow Razor debate, I have one more quick fire question. And it's because I don't know where to put him. I personally put him in the ceiling razor, but I can see him being a floor razor. Where would you put Anthony Davis in this discussion? Ooh. Ooh that's you know what I one. mean? Like, is he a floor or a ceiling raiser? You're talking about with him and LeBron? No, I'm just talking Anthony Davis. Is, like, Anthony Davis, is he, he a better? He was tough he, in New Orleans. Yeah, he like, was he was a, a floor great floor raiser, but look what he did in L.A., bro. Look what he in did when he, when he had LeBron James. Yeah. I, th- I think anyone becomes a ceiling raiser when you play with LeBron. Like Dwayne Wade, for example, who's a classic floor raiser. I think yeah. I'd label him as a natural floor raiser. Yeah. But, which, but yeah. Dwayne Wade was not as good... Uh, as a no, it's crazy though, a you, you just become a side piece when you play with LeBron. No, but here's the thing. But here's the thing. Dwayne Wade was not as good as a ceiling raiser as he was as a floor raiser. Anthony Davis was insane as a ceiling raiser. Like I would argue, Anthony Davis that one year when they won uh, the championship, that was the best teammate LeBron has, LeBron James has ever played with. Yeah, dude, he was dominant. Exactly. So when you, yeah, you, you, when you look back on Anthony Davis, are you, for the for the game. When you look yeah. back on Anthony Davis, are you gonna think he was a ceiling raiser or a floor raiser? And I'm gonna and the reason I put him as ceiling raiser is his um, consistency and and health issues. Like I can't right. trust him to be my floor raiser. Oh yeah. So I would say Anthony Davis is like one of the greatest ceiling raisers of all time. That's it. That's crazy. If you if you play with LeBron, you're either gonna be in the you're same sentence. Like you're either, you're either gonna be it's gonna be you and LeBron. Or you're gonna be a part of the others. Like that's there's no in between. It's like LeBron. Kevin Love, bro. Kevin Love got done dirty. Oh <laughs> he, man, he sacrificed his his whole soul for a ring, bro. For, oh, the thing Kevin, is, you're not getting that ring. In Love, you're not getting that. K Love would have been so dirty if he played out his career with someone else, bro. He would bro. not have won a ring in Minnesota. But like the only other, he wouldn't have. You know what's no, weird? but if it was like a, like a nasty duo somewhere else, like his legacy, I feel like would get better. He was supposed like, to go to the Warriors forget. for Clay. He was supposed to go it's to the a, Warriors that year for Clay Thompson. Thompson, that would be so nasty. A five now with Kevin Love at the center. Imagine. Bro, that's Getting 30 imagine. boards, chubby love. Holy. <laughs> Kevin Love. Imagine Kevin Love, right? It's been what? It's been three years, four years since Kyrie left. And about three years since Braun left. So Kevin Love's just been chilling there since 2015. He's been chilling there for seven years. Yeah, that's crazy. Cleveland. Wait, wait, wait. Hold so on. What if, Sorry, continue your point, Z. What if, what if what if Kevin Love like once he finally gets done with Cleveland? What if he actually takes up that offer and tries to get to Golden State? 
Nah, and, he's too and, old now. Nothing would happen. Nothing would happen. He's a decent. He's, he's a decent, decent six man. He's still yeah, he's a no, vet, he's, but he's not. He's not the he's Kevin underrated. Love we knew. He's not the Kevin Love we knew in Minnesota. But we're running low on time. Uh, we're running a little low on time. I, I think that's the last segment, though, right? It he is. did put up thirty three in, in one quarter, though. Yeah, that was in Cleveland. We do that have. Uh, we do have my secret segment to end things off real quick. We have like three minutes before. Uh, we hit, this, we hit this deadline, but time that time to hop on the Secret <laughs> Segment Express. Um, it's been a year oh, since Russell Westbrook got traded to the Lakers, and I want to ask you guys real quick: What are your opinions on this Lakers season? Now that it's been a year to fully digest Russell Westbrook in a Lakers jersey, how would you rate that season? Basically, well, hey, rate it, last no, season. No, give, it, give, it. It, give it a grade. Give it a grade. Just give it a grade. grade. Realistic grade. Don't just say F. Oh don't my just say goodness! F. What do you mean realistic grade? F <laughs> is a realistic don't grade. Just say F. F. F for failure. F, F for not making minus. the freaking playoffs. F for not making the play-in. F for not making a single impact. It's Anthony on the Davis, NBA. bro. Anthony it's, it's Davis. It's not Westbrook's just... fault, though. Rate okay. It's Anthony Davis. This is a more fair fault. question. Grade Westbrook season. All the... Grade Westbrook season for the Lakers. Okay. Uh, um, that's I would a say a question. C. I would say a C. A, a C? Yeah. I'll give him a good. Bro, he averaged eighteen, seven, and seven, and he had a way Don't better second half. Than, bro, have you have you watched him play? He had a better he, second half to the season than he did in the he's first. A, half. He's a high effort player and someone who keeps trying. So I'll give him like like a, a C minus at best. Yeah. But the, uh, it's production, bro. It's the NBA. You can't just get points yeah. for trying like that. Here's you know? here's right. the thing. I'll give him I'll give him a C minus specifically because. I called it from the start of the season last year that it was going to be bad. It was just the, and, it, and the, the fit is, is against them. The, yeah, the fit was terrible. But I was like, if Russell Westbrook's on another team where he's the focal point and the number one option, he's going to thrive. He's going to be perfectly fine. But he's in a system where he's with the Lakers, and you mean to tell me that your best bet to win games is to either have LeBron bring the ball up the floor and Russ play the shooting guard position and sit in the corner, or you're going to have Russ bring the ball up the floor and LeBron shooting eleven three pointers a night. It's it, it as yeah, a Lakers. Yeah. I'm not, you know, if you're a Lakers fan, I'm just assuming that you would not like that. That doesn't yeah. make any sense. The Lakers fans all over Twitter. Oh, the NBA Finals is going to be Brooklyn and and, and L.A. Russ is going to finally me. get his revenge on Kevin. That was Durant. me. Shut the hell up. This is not Disney Channel. <laughs> this is not this is not Disney Channel on a Friday night. No Halloween weekend special. None of that. None of that fairy tale shit is going to happen. Sorry. All right, but we we got to wrap know. things up here. This was a great episode. Um. 10 out of 10 episode of my still love Russ. This was really I love Russ. I love Russ. Uh, we will no like, longer how, be... How else can we include someone's wife in here? Yeah, no, just gonna say that. We, we will no longer be talking about anybody's wives, but thank you for tuning Unless in. Unless Kevin Durant got a wife. Next, next, I think we got four in there. Next episode is going to be a great episode is when we hit double digits. <laughs> Our double digit His wife is, is the Wilson up. evolution. The, du- oh the double God. digit episode is coming soon. Episode 10. That basketball. Thank you for tuning <laughs> into episode I'm 9. Going. I'm still going. <laughs> thank you for tuning in to episode 9. Uh, <laughs> later. Later. Love you.